Well, hello and welcome to our backyard garden. Uh, this is episode number 11, um, showing off our garden uh, in the South Carolina upstate, Greer, South Carolina to be exact. And uh, as I say, this is episode 11. It's uh, April 18th, 2024. Um, I'm doing a kind of a late afternoon, early evening video this time. I've done uh, the last couple of times some morning videos. This time, um, it's still a beautiful day, very uh, clear, a little hazy. You can see the moon up there. Just did a great job for us uh, a week ago with the eclipse. Hopefully you were able to see that. And uh, we're gonna get started. Um, before we do, I'll show off the one, one thing that's kind of hidden here, our uh, snapdragon from seed growing up out of the driveway. It's doing the best out of any snapdragons that we have anywhere in the yard, strangely enough. We've had luck like that uh, down here. It's very interesting. Um, irises, we've got a couple different types. The uh, purple ones, and uh, all bearded. And then the white and purple ones. Um, and actually we had some light, uh, pale blue ones as well, but they're done. Um, this group is in full sun, so they're kind of finishing up fairly early. Um, we had white ones down here. Um, they're done. And then uh, we have others over here. They don't get quite as much sun, so they're they're delayed a little bit. They're doing really, really well. And we have others, various places in the yard that are still coming up. So we're gonna have uh, color from our irises probably for another two, three weeks, I'm hoping. And then uh, and then we'll go from there. Now this area, if you've watched us before, uh, our videos from last year, we're gonna have, hopefully, assuming that they come up, we're gonna have Cleome. Uh, growing from seed. Right now we just have some weeds in there. I've sprayed them. Uh, hopefully they're going to disappear soon. And then as we continue down through the rest of the yard, we have a beautiful yellow climbing rose. This was uh, just getting ready to, to really start opening up last week, and it has done so. Um, the uh, buds are a, a pretty bright yellow, but as soon as they open up, they, they lose a lot of that color. So they're very, uh, very pale yellow but uh, beautiful beautiful flowers the plant itself is doing extremely well no black spot at all yet uh, it usually gets it a little bit later on but for right now I'm really enjoying looking at this we just put it in about a year ago um, did pretty well in its first year not not as well as now um, deer ate about half of it and uh, then um, it we're going to take a little break here and uh, show off uh, my wife Jenny she hasn't appeared on our videos in the past. So she's the, the architect of this whole thing. And uh, just today, uh, she's very excited because we've gotten some bulbs in. Very nice oriental lilies. And um, hopefully those will go in soon and uh, still come up this spring. I think they come up this spring, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. uh, we've got some other things in here. So. Um, and they're nice and large. Yeah, very healthy. But um, these should really give us a nice color. They came from K. Van Burgundian, if any of you are familiar with that, uh, that name. Um, these uh, usually do pretty well. They're very, uh, very colorful. Yes. Uh, Asiatic and Oriental lilies. And same for, in, uh, for fall planting for tulips and hyacinths and everything. They're a great company. Um, they're cheap. And they have great size bulbs no fungus you know just just a wonderful perfect perfect uh bulb to put in we also have some flowers that we bought uh, recently uh we're getting ready to put these in some big what we call pom-pom marigolds um, just a variety of african marigolds some vinca geraniums couple of looks like some phlox, some begonias, and uh, dianthus. dianthus, yeah, some strawberries, just a bunch of things. And uh, so we thought we would just give you that special little look. And uh, as I say, more bulbs in here. She's digging through those and now we'll, uh, we'll go back to our video. All right, so uh, actually for the rest of the video, our special guest, uh, Jenny, is going to be uh, helping us out with information about the, 
various plants that we have here. We just finished talking about the uh, uh, knockout yellow rose, and we've got our hydra Those four of our out hydrangeas. Really well in South Carolina. It's very hard to grow uh, hybrid tea roses here, but I'm an English cottage gardener, so I I try to do it. But it's funny um, when you go to the botanical gardens in Atlanta. They say that the English tried to do, you know, when they came over to do English cottage gardening and they just couldn't do it because of the heat. But I've, I've kind of found a way to do that. Utilize um, the shade, that, that really helps. And we have these gigantic evergreen trees that belong to our neighbor and they really tower over this part of the, the garden. So uh, anything that would struggle a little bit in, in the uh, uh, direct sun, like our azaleas and uh, the viburnum back there, uh, they they do very, very well because of that shade we get. We also have a big oak tree and uh, a lot of other foliage over that way. So this is the, the the only real shady part of our backyard. And then we have a lot of shade in the front yard too. And you always need to let your hyacinths, I'm sure you know this, uh, hyacinths and um, tulips and daffodils completely die down before you take the greenery away. Otherwise, they won't rebloom for you the next year. Actually, that's a very good point because I have not mentioned that before. Um, that's um, kind of her specialty, and so I don't. Uh, these are I don't trot on that. Uh, you have to make sure that you spray them if you have deer in your area, because they will eat the buds, and you will come out and you will start crying because all the buds have been eaten from your Asiatic lilies. Right. And we we ran into that a lot in the north. We had a yes. little big deer problem up there. So uh, here we have our digitalis. It was getting ready to bloom last week, and now it is fully in bloom. Uh, this came back from last year. Uh, looks fantastic. It looks like it would, it's actually spread a little bit. I, um, I transferred a couple of little babies that were elsewhere. Um, yeah, these were almost yeah. growing into the grass, and uh, if you look at some of our videos from back in February, they were out here at the grass line, and I didn't want them to get chopped out by the mower, so and, and he was and, nice enough to and move do them. do not eat these, but uh, this plant was actually used for um, uh, congestive heart failure. Uh, we're in the health field, so, um, but don't, don't eat them, but, yeah. but yes. Enjoy, do not consume. Yes. And then Got another one over here. A couple of its leaves are a little yellowed, but uh, it's going to come out with some flowers here pretty soon, and uh, that's nice. I also want to show off our um, little Johnny Jump Ups or little tiny uh, uh, pansies. These were eaten down to the ground by our rabbit and deer population over the winter. They weren't doing a whole lot, and then we started spraying every week to keep uh, our little rodent friends away, and. Um, now they're fully in bloom, which is really, really nice. Uh, also, I wanted to show off this, um, it's called an arbusto. Um, it's it's a uh, also known as a blue muffin type of a viburnum. Um, it gets these little white flowers. Right now they're just buds. They'll turn into white flowers, and then those will um, give us little tiny berries that are a blue color, and the birds usually end up eating most of those, but they're kind of, uh, kind of fun while they're out. Um, kind of fun to see. And then, I know you want to talk about this in the worst way. Yeah, I always put Cleome wherever I can in the upstate. Clematis. Uh, 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 Clematis, sorry. Um, because it, it seems to grow. It seems to like it here. So I. That's an understatement. And these things are everywhere. They are climbing all up through. This is a butterfly bush. And there's more Clematis on this than actual butterfly bush. So... Right. Um, and they give us give you these gigantic flowers that you can't really tell, but they're about uh, four or five inches across. And it's the same here. And the, the same thing here, the, yeah. Cle I mix the Cleome and Clematis. roses, or Clematis with the roses, because then um, I feel like it helps give the uh, the the roots um, for the rose, like you know, relief from the the heat. And we have seen this over and over again, especially where we have climbing roses. We have cl uh, clematis growing up through them, and they just are consistently doing fantastically. Now here we have a hydrangea that's just trying to take over this entire section of the garden. Um, this will give us a ton of big white flowers, kind of looking like the viburnum back here that we're going to get to in a moment. 
Uh, that, those will come out in another month or two. Now this is, this is absolutely spectacular. None of these had opened up last week. Um, these are clematis. They look like big dinner plate dahlias. They're huge, probably a, a good four or five inches across. Um, honestly, we've been growing clematis for 20 years. We've never seen flowers this big before. And um, it's the only one that we have like this. We just got it at, at one of the local stores. It's growing up in the middle of a uh, climbing, or a, a, a knockout, you know, just a routine knockout red rose. And uh, it, it's just a, a wonderful combination. Both uh, plants really enjoy working together. Also, I wanna say, speaking of roses, we've got a, a petite knockout rose down here. This uh, came in or went in last year, doing pretty well, doing a little better this year than last. We have one up further up the yard as well. And then some irises. And another Jack and Amy that we're trying to grow on the fence. Yep. Three more clematis actually that are back here against the fence. And uh, even though they're in the shade, they are doing very well, putting out lots of vines and buds. They, uh, they'll bloom a little bit later because they're in the shade, but they'll still uh, do very, very well. And then with down here, we get into our amazing uh, uh, azaleas. Uh, we have six of them down through here. They are absolutely fully in bloom right now. Um, mid mid April around here is is really the time for it. About a month later in the north, but um, April is is really the the peak month for these kinds of spring flowers. And then our daylilies down here, they're, Are, they're progressively fine. they're finally getting bigger. Yeah, we put these in a few years ago. Now we got we got a few weeds. That's one thing we noticed about these. They they'll get weeds growing up through them, but we'll uh, we'll take care of that. And then another uh, another variety of. Digitalis here, doing really well. Another one behind it. And, uh, and then the viburnum. We have uh, several viburnum up in the front. We just have this one here, which has done just amazingly well. We absolutely love this uh, plant. It's, uh, it's one of our favorite things in the whole garden, especially when you look at it next to uh, all these other flowering plants, the, the, the azaleas and the viburnum together at, at the same time. It's, it's just, it, uh, it's just spectacular. And then coming down into our shady area, um, we have our astilbe. And lamb's ear. And lamb's ear. I always show off the lamb's ear, even though they don't flower. They're a nice little ground cover plant. Very, uh, very soft. It feels like, strangely enough, a lamb's ear. And then astilbe here. These are uh, starting, well, not those, but this group of astilbe are just starting to put out their buds although it'll be another month or two before they really start to uh, flower but they do well in the shade we've got the same thing down here actually these look like they may open up pretty soon these uh, red ones they are extremely happy i, I must say and um, this this area again is very shady uh it's the one little shady corner of our backyard and uh, a lot of things do well here and then as we turn we've got another big azalea here and as I always like to show off our wisteria we just put this in last year it's finally opening up and uh, it's not fully in bloom but it's uh, probably by next week it will be it has a very pleasant uh, faint scent it's not real strong but it's uh, uh, I wouldn't say it's beautiful like roses but it's very pleasant it and can be invasive in yes. South Carolina very so. One of several things, vines that we have that are uh, pretty invasive. So you do have to cut them back. You have to make sure you put them in a place where they can't do any damage to other nearby plants. Or at the end of a fence like this is a good place because then they'll just spread along the fence and you can just chop back the vines to keep them uh, under control. Oh yeah, and then we have some, uh, I believe these are Nelly Moser clematis. Yeah, I, I've, I've forgotten all the names. You know, Giacomini and is, is the one I always remember, and the yeah. others I, I'm kind of guessing. Yeah. But, uh, and these irises are going to bloom. Yeah, this one is already bearded out, irises. this beautiful bearded iris. And these others and will come along soon. I just try to grow roses. These are going to come out as light pink roses, climbing roses, and Cleome together along the fence that goes along the pond. Um, roses and, and, uh, 
and jasmine too those will be yeah, in there yeah they, they just go well together um you can see the buds there so we're going to have hundreds and hundreds of these little pink uh roses before long if you saw any of our videos last year our uh climbing pink rose bloomed really pretty consistently from april to october and even even after that probably probably up to about thanksgiving when we had our first frost and that was that was the end And then the other Cleome. Oh, Clematis. Clematis. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I keep saying that tonight. Um, but yeah, we have a mix of Clematis, Jasmine, and Climbing Roses all through here. Um, <clears throat> great thing about that is, especially at, at this time of year, you, you're getting all three of them blooming at the same time. The Jasmine will start probably in another couple of weeks, get little tiny white flowers. Um, but the, uh, the roses, you can see a big... Uh, knockout up here gives us kind of a uh, darker blood red uh, type of uh, rose. The, the only blood red knockout that we have found yeah. so far. Yeah, it's not something. Oh, we would get another one. Yeah. The deer need <clears throat> it, but uh, it's it's coming back. Yeah. The interesting thing is that we could see uh, before everything started to grow in the spring, the deer ate literally half of this plant. Now this this thing was about, I would say, a good seven feet tall last year. Um, in that time, all this is new. This is all brand new growth. It is just covered with buds. So this is the kind of plant that you you, you lose part of it and it comes back twice as big and twice as uh, prolific in terms of flowers. You wanna talk about the, the um, oriental lilies here? Oh, yes, and these, these are more established oriental lilies, so you can see that they're budding up a little bit quicker um, than, the, the, than the others in the garden. And uh, I think they're scarlet red. We have some more down here. Mm -hmm. We have some uh, daisies down in this area, but we have a number of different colors. Um, I remember and one... a lot of daylilies. <clears throat> a lot of daylilies, of course. A lot of different colors of um, the Asiatic lilies. Uh, one that was a, a, a red that was so dark that it really looked more black than anything else. It's a very unique plant. Can't wait to see that one in another few weeks. And then as we get over into here, this area is stunning. Um, the clematis are just going crazy. Um, they're just sort of following the climbing roses up the trellis and um, yeah, we do have one. The, the, the rose on this side is, is lilac, and we only have one of those. And then we have the little pink ones that are on the other side of the um, uh, trellis. And um, they're, uh, they're all coming out. And we're going to get a lot more color over the next few weeks as this uh, all continues to develop. And again, as I say, we have daisies here. This is about twice the size of what it was last year. So we're going to have those blooming probably before long. Um, and just to give you a close-up, for those of you who have not seen these before, you, you literally have hundreds of these little roses out at any given time. We're just starting to get some of them now, but uh, the number of buds is more than any of us can count. And um, so that's, that's going to be a spectacular look. And they're up onto the trellis, uh, coming across to meet the roses on this side, which are more traditional red. And they're starting to bloom now too, and uh, so we're, 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 you know, this is this is something that's been about five or six years in the making. We're finally really getting the the exact look that we wanted, and then and, uh, and this is not supposed to be grown in the upstate of South Carolina because the soil is just so bad. So I had soil brought in. And that's the only reason why I'm able to grow these. Yeah, the, the native soil is not too uh, not too good for this sort of thing. But um, if you, uh, if you it, it, I'll tell you what, if you really want to get a, a great garden, spend the money to bring in quality soil at the beginning because mm -hmm. it is absolutely worth it. And then you, you really get your money's worth on any flowers that you you buy after that because they will they will really pay off. Speaking of which, we've got one of the most spectacular roses that we've ever had. Uh, this thing is absolutely huge, and it's got a bunch more uh, 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 buds on it. 
this is, is an interesting plant. It tends to struggle with black spot, and then it'll uh, it'll uh, kind of finish up, and then it'll come back. It'll get new growth, new uh, uh, flowers. Uh, this thing will bloom off and on throughout the season, which is fantastic. <clears throat> also have some Veronica down here. These will start to bloom in another month or two. Beautiful white, I'm sorry, purple uh, stalks of, of color. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and I forget what this is. Do you remember offhand? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, there are a few things that we, <laughs> we've we bought uh, a while back, and we don't remember the names exactly, but it's a, a beautiful so pink flower. So if you flower. know, you can leave a comment. Let us know. Let us know. And then um, we've got a, another nice rose here. Um, just starting to bloom. It's not especially big. It's about maybe three inches across, but you can see a lot of buds on this. Uh, it's not a knockout. It's just a, uh, I don't even know what the, the, classification that is. These are all but... hybrid teas. And do you see all the black spot that's yeah, on them? They're really prone to that. So this is why when they flower, I end up cutting them just back to the base and then they regrow. Yeah. And then and they grow pretty the quickly and regrow. And then I try to put something like the viburnum around the the edges of the the root system to to try to protect their roots. The ver and Veronica. Uh, Veronica. Yeah. And that's the only way that they that they can really grow. Right. This is I believe this is also a hybrid tea. To yes. This this uh, yeah. sort of it's a sort of a coral color. It's not really red. Um, it's a reddish orange sort of color beautiful beautiful flower um and you can see more clematis oh, back in here at least three different types and uh later in the year we'll have at least a couple more i remember last year we had five or six different uh, types of uh, blooming at the same time and uh, we have a, a, a butterfly bush over here this will bloom later in the summer with some beautiful bright purple flowers um this one i always want to call it a gardenia this is a do you remember offhand now camellia. camellia i always get those two confused for some reason but um that uh, bloomed in the late uh, winter from about mid-february into first couple of weeks of march but it's all done now as our our, our uh, daffodils those are long gone um we have a uh, wisteria over here nearly died off uh, last year. We just put it in. It's coming back. I'm hoping it does a little bit better this uh, this year. We'll see. And we've got some more clematis over here growing up on the fence. And then some more back in here. I've tried training these up on the fence. They don't really want to. They seem to prefer to grow along the ground yeah. for some reason. It's uh, actually growing into our neighbor's yeah. yard. Yeah. Which, uh, which happens. Yeah. And uh, then uh, we have some gladiolas here. Glads are strange things. They don't, uh, they don't do, they do great the first couple of years and then they start to poop out and, and that's kind of where we're at right now is more. Well, actually our, the, the landscaping service that we Well, they, they, did, they, they did, did knock out uh, some of them, but even the ones that have come back uh, have, have uh, really, kind of they're kind of done we'll probably get a handful of flowers this year but it, it, to keep those going you kind of have to put in new ones every every few years some more clematis here not quite blooming but then we have over here uh these huge white ones they're growing up into the um uh, into the weeping cherry tree uh big uh five six inch wide clematis flowers and then you can even see some wisteria up there growing into the tree. And we have to, uh, once those are done blooming, we're gonna have to chop some of those back so they don't completely take over the tree because they will do that. They have a way of uh, just going everywhere they every, everywhere that they wanna go. And you can kind of see the trunk here. There's a, a vine, it's a very sizable vine. At, uh, but uh, once they get going, they're, they're hard to get rid of. Uh, fortunately, they they make up for all the trouble by, by giving us these beautiful flowers. And uh, so you can see some of those. They're gonna be opening up a little bit more later on. And then um, from this side, you can kind of see more of those and the clematis and the, uh, the creeping jenny. Not literally creeping jenny, but the, uh, 
more the planting jenny. We actually do have a plant called creeping jenny, interestingly enough, and we're going to be putting those in uh, soon and uh, show those off uh, mostly in pots and I think to some extent in our front yard. But on this, uh, from this angle, uh, looking across, you know, we've got clematis and uh, probably more clematis than anything on this side, but we're going to be seeing more uh, climbing roses as, as the time goes by. Uh, and we work our way into late spring and summer. One of the things that I've always found interesting on these videos is to sort of document the change in season as we go from uh, one... Well, you got to get used to being on well, international with, television now. With flowers, I will. <laughs> Different climatics, yeah. I will. But, uh, but the, the, the uh, transition from... Uh, one season to the next is is always fun to watch and, and we really see it here we've gone from early spring to mid spring and now uh, even though it's still only mid April it's, it's really kind of a late spring look because we're, we're our roses are fully out and uh, speaking of that this is absolutely gorgeous I think this is a, this is a hybrid tea yes it is yeah so and it hasn't gotten black spot yet and I don't know why it will it guaranteed will. but yep. it, for, for the time being we're trying to enjoy it and the all the uh, big flowers it's gotten a little bit bigger and a little more prolific each little year more yeah like bearded iris back here um, these have uh, just gotten more uh, healthy and more prolific each year we used to have some gladiolas back there but they uh, they just kind of gave up after a while as I said uh, another hybrid tea rose here beautiful uh, beautiful lavender color um, beautiful scent to go with it lots of daylilies we had some veronica back here um, and then yet more clematis sort of a pale bluish purple color We've got a rose that's actually dyed here we're going to get rid of that and then we have our first calla lily that is coming up now most of those come up about a month from now but this one has already come up we bought about seven or eight different colors of those last year. And, and it would be I really interesting. Hope they come back up because yeah. they were expensive. They were expensive and they were a lot of work to put in. And uh, we kind of scattered those about the yard. So we'll, we'll see what happens as time goes by. We have some more, what would you call these, Asiatic lilies? Or these yeah. are, these are so, Asiatics? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll bloom a little bit later on. And then we have uh, a lilac here that never did bloom this year kind of uh, pointless uh, to even have it um, but uh, but it gives us some nice greenery in the shade and then uh, beautiful clematis growing up through that we do have a, a lilac that did give us some uh, some blooms earlier faint smell smelled kind of nice and uh, that's done and then more uh, daylilies coming up and a sort of a rogue digitalis that came up um, it, it, right in the middle of, of uh, one of the day lilies giving us some beautiful color over here we've never planted those in this part of the garden but it's nice to nice to have more variation and uh, another another hybrid tea here beautiful lavender blooms has quite a few of them um, this one is always fraught with black spot and then it'll kind of die back and then it'll come back again um, that's the that's the nature of hybrid teas, unfortunately. But they uh, they do continue to put flowers out, and they come back most years. So, just got a mosquito. That's that's the nature of this time of uh, time of night. It's about uh, eight o'clock now, uh, so we're we're going to lose the light pretty soon. But we we're just about finished. Some more um, uh, Asiatic and Oriental lilies through here, and uh, all the way over here. These are going to give us some spectacular blooms pretty pretty soon That's coreopsis down mm -hmm. here i believe mm -hmm. anything you want to say about coreopsis uh, that only blooms for a couple of weeks and then it's done uh it, and it's and it's it's short so if you want something to to edge your bed that's that's nice yeah especially with that bright color a bright yellow color um got our blueberry here it's finally it did put out a few flowers and it looks like it's going to actually have some little berries if the birds don't eat them um, our usual crop is about five to ten berries for an entire year, so it's 
not exactly enough to feed an army, but uh, the local birds seem to be pretty happy. I think I got one berry myself last year that I actually got to eat. And then uh, another one of these pink climbing roses. This thing is just massive. Um, I think it's the biggest single plant that we have outside of a tree in the entire garden. It has uh, uh, climbed up the side of the stairway. And uh, so that being the case, it's about 10 feet tall right now. And it has hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, blooms. By the time the year is over, it will probably have put out, uh, put out a few thousand flowers. Stunning plant. Um, that's really about it. Um, we have some hostas back in here in the shade, but that's really, that's really about it for now. I shouldn't say about it because that's quite a bit for one week. Um, and again, as you kind of look through here, it's, uh, uh, it's just a, a wonderful time of year. There's tons and tons of color, lots of different, uh, forms of it. And, uh, and again, this is the, this is the architect of the whole thing. She's the one that put it together and, uh, course she doesn't want to take credit for that but um anyway uh hope uh hope you have fun gardening uh, over the next week and until next time happy gardening